Greetings, everyone, and welcome to Chronicles of a Nonprofit. I am excited to see what is going on in the prompts today. Welcome to Nonprofit Podcast. How are my entrepreneurs out here on the podcast? We have 74 people today casting. Oh, that makes me feel so awesome. Thank you for taking your time to be here with me today, September 11th, 2023. This means so much for all of us today. So we're going to learn some some business ethics in our topic today, how to prevent corruption while building your brand. But before we get started in the topic today, I'm glad to announce that the Scales to Success LLC project here in Youngstown, Ohio, will be having its fifth annual success seminar, March 23rd, 2024. Yay! This is to introduce businesses that are known to the STS project. Now, for those of you who know what the business seminars are all about, you already know. If you've been to the other four, you understand what it's about. And what we're going to do is introduce new businesses that I have been empowering and helping to support and to include the Youngstown Community Center, Skies Jewels. Hopefully she hasn't yet said if she was going to be present or not, Deoxys Landscaping, Operation Hope 22, Serenity House, and many, many more. If you are curious about the project, this seminar is going to be for you, entrepreneurs. Our theme for the year will be Rising from the Ashes, the Phoenix Still Shines. Also, If you are interested in becoming a small business owner, no matter where you are in the world, give us a call and we will be right there by your side, helping you to grow your brand. So that's what the Scales to Success LLC project is all about. And our information is is going to be in front of you. Give me one second. You guys know how I work this program. So how are my entrepreneurs doing today? How are you feeling overall? Do you feel that um, the topics are good and that it's giving you something to think about relating to your business? You know, give me some feedback. Okay. Okay. Jennifer in the house. How are you? How you doing, my friend? Thank you so much for being here. Yes, it is helping. It is helping. Um, One of the things I want to do is inspire you to know that you are in control of your brand. You know, no one controls that but you. And making good decisions and choices are vital, extremely vital when it comes to supporting individuals relating to your business, doing the ethical thing, the moral and ethical thing. And remember, we have to bring morality to the business. The business is not going to promote the reality once we decide to make a decision to become an entrepreneur. So I need you to understand the severity of that. So, okay, Monica, hey, listening to your podcast do help with getting things off your chest, thinking about things, helping to support, knowing that you are in the right position, knowing that you are moving in the area that's going to be extremely beneficial, first of all, to you and your brand, and secondly, to your client. Because without your without you being there, your client will not receive the services necessary in order to be a success. 
you know, and that is common sense, but not all sense is common, you know, so not everyone has the commonness in what should be done. So yesterday on our Kelly Appeal TV, um, which is this channel, but we are Chronicles of a Nonprofit that is a sub channel playlist to the R. Kelly Appeal TV channel. We discuss the RICO Act. We discuss racketeering and, you know, what some of the things that are going on in his case. And as an advocate to the project, I promote research for the process of his innocence. I do. I am an advocate for anyone who has been mistreated in the criminal justice system because I am a criminal justice major. And as I was moving through the live yesterday and thank everyone for being there with me on that live, it was very emotional. It was triggering um, as we paid attention to the motion that was filed on his appeal. We noticed some some errors, some things that were truly, generally, genuinely overlooked. So it stemmed into what I'm going to talk about today. So it stemmed into what I'm going to talk about today, and that is how to prevent corruption in your business. Now, many of us already know to dot our I's and cross our T's. If you've been established in business for longer than five years, then you really and truly should know the do's and the don'ts. We know not to take dirty money. We know to make sure that when we are promoting agreements and contracts, individuals have that ability to maintain what they're doing in their business, meaning that they should be able to show you where money is generating and coming from. If you're working with a nonprofit or a new individual, you need to do things like get pay stubs. You need to make sure that the contract and agreement is signed, that there is no, you know, human trafficking involved in the way that the money is going to be dispersed. I mean, this is really sad that we in today's society have to, you know, really polarize, making sure that we are in a position that is beneficial for us because any wrong move that we make could definitely be an outcome that we may not desire. We as entrepreneurs must make sure that we sign agreements and that everyone is in position if ever a lawsuit is able to take place. That's why I'm so grateful for the criminal justice system degrees that I do have, not only looking at the the violations of, of legalities, but also looking at safeguarding a business, a career. And as we know, speaking of R. Kelly, the safeguarding of a career could have saved him from what he's experiencing right now. And sometimes going through that system, we may have things pop up to hold us back and isolate us for many years before the truth finally comes out. So to avoid that, I'm going to give you some pointers today, entrepreneurs. Yes, Nate, you are, yes, <laughs> you are right. You are right. The power behind being crafty in your business is not just in a negative sense. Being crafty is about knowing what you're ordering your steps, making sure that you understand that these things could take place and not being naive. You know, one thing and, and, and checking yourself. As entrepreneurs, we must check ourselves on every move that we've made. I know just recently I made a move that made, you know, I should have done a little more. 
And just by me recognizing it shows me that I'm on top of the game because I recognized it. So sometimes you hold those things to yourself. You move in silence in certain instances. And when you do move in silence, if it does ring a bell for you and the intuition flag rises, that's when you need to pay the ultimate attention to your brand and to your craft to make sure that you are in position. So let's talk about the ways that... um, we can prevent corruption. Now, I went to the law tax organization here on Google. And as the commission in any state continues to scope on how business people can individualize their brands to their employers, to their contractors, it has become involved that Corruption is on the rise. And they use the example of the African businesses. There are a lot of people all over the world, not just in Africa. I've seen them here in America um, that have no ethics in how they're going to make their money. Not all money is good money. So if you have someone or something or some organization that's trying to come in to launder their money or, you know, that right there is a part of the Racketeering Act of 1970. So you have to make sure that you're in a position that is going to safeguard every move you make. Because if you affiliate yourself with the wrong individuals, then that comes back to hurt you. And don't believe that those watching, those big brothers, those big sisters, those virtual robots, those doxers, don't think that they're not paying attention to every move you make. I know. So it's best to be transparent, to be clear, to be open, to be, you know, just as real as you could possibly be. So... They're using the example here that the African businesses need to seriously look at how to protect themselves from getting embroiled in similar situations in the future, such as corruption, Um, not unique to our country, (laughs) Um, says a headquarter uh, investigator in forensic international corporate law. So I don't believe that. I believe that anyone in, in Anyone is potentially, you know, able to move corruptly in their business. Seriously, I I do. I don't believe that it is an African thing. I don't believe it's an American thing. I don't believe it's a Indian thing. I just believe that it is a individual thing. So the United Nations Convention Against Corruption established an international anti-corruption day recognized on October 31st each year. Shockingly, perhaps all it has done is highlight how much worse the crimes have become over the years. Okay. So transparency is the key, you know? Um, So let's get to some facts here that they show. Number one, understand the law and understand regulations. That's why it is extremely vital that we know our Ohio, if you're in Ohio, Georgia, if you're in Georgia, Illinois, if you're in Illinois, um, Detroit, if you're in Detroit, we need to know law, both nationally and internationally. Sometimes I will go and just Google laws about specific things. I have people who want to come in and become a employee of the Youngstown Community Center. I don't do employment. I do independent contracting because number one, that leaves me a little more space to allow people to do what they do. Now in that doing, I am observing and watching and paying attention, making sure that, you know, things are decently and in order. Many people have have walked away from me, called me unprofessional and all of that because there is too many guidelines and stipulations that 
they must follow when it comes to working with me because I'm not going down for anyone that's doing something illegal, laundered, or outside of the regulations. So understanding the laws are extremely important. And then um, when we look at several pieces of legislation that exist, including the Prevention and Combating of Corrupt Activities Act of 2004, the Prevention of Organized Crime Act of 1998, and the Financial Intelligence Center Act of 2001, FICA, the Companies Act of 2008, Companies Act, and the Protected Disclosure Act of 2000. So there's a lot of acts that are out there that you must know that to preserve how you handle your business and what they reflect as corrupt business, racketeering, uh, laundering, and drug dealing, and other things. There's a lot more. It's almost like 35 of them. Number two, conduct a risk assessment. A risk assessment is the first step towards establishing an effective and meaningful compliance program. Make sure that you dot your I's and cross your T's. If something is going on in the business and you're not getting the answers you need, then you need to go over the top and make sure that your partners are doing what is necessary. And that's why a check-in of a community board Advisory board is extremely important. That's what we do at the Youngstown Community Center. We check and let our transparency be very clear to our community influencers and directors. Um, also, let me see here. Best practices, you know. Mm-hmm. So this risk assessment is looking at government departments. It's also looking at intermediaries, regulators, uh, and people who look at regulatory environmental programs. You know, we can even go as far as conducting insurance, um, insurance protocol. When we have, you know, people coming in, looking at things and, you know, saying that this needs to be updated, you know, all those regulations are extremely important and they're vital and can be looked at as corruption. And then setting the tone from the top, telling people how to comply with the ethical culture and integrity of the Youngstown Community Center, managing from a zero tolerance approach to all forms of corruption and letting it be recognized that it will not be tolerated is the best way to prevent your business from becoming corrupt. Dealing with uh, unethical behavior is not going to be established and not tolerated. And then always conduct due diligence. The due diligence forms an integral part of the compliance program and should be conducted at all times, not just the staff, but also business partners, agents, volunteers, suppliers, service providers, procedural programs, requesting and fact-checking information. It's like so deep until people, you know, if I remember having a group of volunteers trim my bushes outside of my location. They wanted to do it their way. I told them it was a protocol. I told them that it was something fundamentally important because the value of riding past the community center and looking at the landscape is one of the most inviting things that one can look at before finding that, you know, it's important for them to connect to community and coming into the center. That's what's going to drive them into the center. So I said, no, there's a certain way that I'm going to do my bushes and this is how it is going to be done. They became, and you know, a few of them, they became very hot tempered. I have no idea why, because it seems to me like, especially if, you know, it is something that vital and they know how, you know, to the point I am, it was amazing how 
these individuals acted. They acted like as if they planned on truly destroying the bushes and making them look bad just to say oops. And it was weird. It was so weird. But the procedures were there in place prior to, and it prevented them from being able to mess them up. There was a certain way that I wanted to do things. And I watched. I watched how they handled even the the trimmers. And I said, wow, look at how irresponsible. So if that was irresponsible from the beginning, could you only imagine what the bushes would have looked like if I had not have stepped in? And then keep reviewing your policy. Keep going back to this keep it simple rule. Look at the framework. Look at the effective policy practices that has happened respectfully. Look at the fraud opportunities that could have created corruption in the business. Look at the whistleblowing whistle and what that policy looks like. Look at the gifts and donations that are coming through, who's bringing them, how you're monitoring them, and what other procedures are very are vital. And then communicate and train. We need to train those people who are going to be in a position, I don't care if they're volunteering for a community luncheon. People are going to need to know how to respectfully be a part of the environment of the entrepreneurial practice. Absolutely. Even in dog grooming, even in dog grooming, Saeed, it is vital that we even know how far to, you know, sharpen our utensils to cut hair, you know, as a barber, as a dog groomer, you know. So these are are, are extreme important positions that we must be in in order not to jeopardize what we've worked so hard to do, you know? So I definitely want you guys to think about how you're going to safeguard your business. The thing that motivates you to make money, the area of business that motivates you to say, you know, this is a a legal entity. This is a business that runs successfully. And also, we want to, we want to, um, how can I put it here? We definitely want to empower those who whistle blow. Blow the whistle. You know, blow the whistle. Protect the whistleblowers. Because experience has taught me that irregular conduct is reported and people come to you with things that they just don't feel comfortable with. You know, I, I did have a entrepreneur who came into my kitchen and it was amazing because my staff and my community advisory board told me, be very mindful of the way that they're handling working with a commercial grease oven and grill. You know, our pilots are on, fire is continually going, and I did. So what I what I chose to do was to go in and make sure I did a deep cleaning on all grease and all opportunities. I covered myself. A week later, there was another uh, organization maybe less than two miles away, that had a grease fire in their kitchen. And I said that that energy could have easily been at our spot if I had not have been aware. And if people hadn't have come to me and told me how irresponsible. And so there's ways that people, regardless if you're an entrepreneur or not, there are expectations that you have to have when you are working with another organization. <clears throat> and this expectation may not fit into the way that you do things. You have to be open-minded because someone somewhere is going to say that 
there's an irresponsibility situation there. There is, you know, a lack of communication. And then that leads me to the final step. Monitor and review the people that you empower and engage to do what it is you do. No need to duplicate your service. No need to have someone come in, another nonprofit to compete. We're not even talking about that. But there are times where some people jump in to fit in just to establish themselves, to get what they want, to step over who you are because location, because of empowerment, because of opportunity. So be very mindful of who you allow opportunity with. And that's that's a great um, idea, Kim, making sure that we mind people who we give opportunity to because they could come in with that sabotage mentality and that mentality could be the very thing that sets us or shuts us down. So how are you guys feeling about the information that we share today on Chronicles of a Nonprofit, episode 43, September 11th? Thank you. Thank you. I'm on point. Okay. <laughs> I try to be. I try to bring as much valuable information to you on the Chronicles as much as possible. I try to bring to you the um, paranoid state of a mentality that needs to be honored in business, not to the degree where it's so much so that you don't understand that you can live through the entrepreneurial practice, but to make sure that you know what your future looks like, not what someone else comes in carelessly to promote for you. And it's not saying that we are paranoid entrepreneurs. No, absolutely not. It's saying that we are dotting our I's and we're crossing our T's because we've seen so many businesses. So look, look at what's going on with Donald Trump right now. Why would we not hold a sense of accountability to everyone and keep everyone at level six on the spectrum of entrepreneur practice and review? Until they prove to us who they are. Until you prove to me that you are on team Youngstown Community Center, you're not going to bring areas of business that is going to lower the standards of what we're doing. You're going to uplift us. You're not going to compete with us. You're going to uplift us because we are growing together. We are already there. And no one will outshine the Youngstown Community Center as much as the Youngstown Community Center will shine on its own. We are the portal. We are the light. We are the, the availability to promote space. And that's one thing that many entrepreneurs need. And so we are fulfilling that mission. And we're not going to lower our standards just to allow someone to step up and grow up and glow up for free. So if you are in the realm of trying to use business as a development entrepreneurs, make sure you understand your worth. No matter what, if you got to sit there empty I've literally had to sit in my building empty, doing my own programs, running my own um, overhead costs with partnerships and investors and people who believe in me and sponsors and my own money from my own LLC to put forth into something that we need to always have open, and that is a community center. We need not ever give the community a reason to believe that there's nothing there for them. Even if they never use it, it is up to us to continue to shine and let people know that this has been available and has and will be available. But I would rather sit in an empty building than to know that I'm being used and abused for the services in which I'm going to have to pay for anyway on my own and someone gets over for free. It just will not happen. That is not 
entrepreneurial expectation. It is not realistic. It is absolutely asinine. So I thank you so much for watching, commenting, sharing, subscribing. I'm getting ready to upload this to my YouTube channel. Thank you all my YouTube um, subscribers and people who watch these podcasts. You make the podcast beautiful. Like, 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 please like and share all the videos whenever you see them. So I am super excited. I'm going to keep you posted on the fifth annual success seminar that is coming up. And we are trying to get someone, well, not trying, they actually called me back. So we're going to get a keynote speaker that is going to share with us entrepreneurial workings. And this woman is phenomenal. <laughs> She's known all over the world. And as soon as we connect the agreement, I will definitely get back with everyone. God bless, peace, and as always, see you next time.